Okay, today we're going to try creating a cylinder in Affinity Designer. Uh, I'm trying something new with my microphone, holding it as close as I can to my mouth, so sorry if you're getting some, uh, some mouth noise. But uh, anyway, uh, this is how you do it. So here's a cylinder that I've previously drawn, and uh, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So I'm going to first delete this, and then I'm going to start by making uh, an ellipse. So I choose my ellipse tool, and I'm going to draw an ellipse here, and I want this uh, this fill to be, well, so excuse me, I need to go to the fill tool and tell it I want a solid fill. Okay, for now. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically create copies of that. Uh, I'm going to use the control J, and I'm going to take my hand away from my mic for a second while I do this. I'm going to end up making a total of three ellipses. Um, and while I'm doing that, um, you won't be hearing what I'm saying. So hold on. All right. So what I've done is I've created these three ellipses. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, leave the bottom two of them touching, and uh, and and move the 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 top one up up higher. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to join these two shapes to make one shape. So I'm going to to do that. I'm going to drag select both of those. You see that I have the two ellipses here selected. I'm going to go up here to this add button and add those two shapes. And you can see that that's now one shape here. Um, I can also show you in the uh, in the view mode by going to outline view and you can see that I have one outline here, one shape and one up here. Okay, so I'm gonna move back and I'm gonna go back to the vector view. And uh, now that I have this uh, shape created, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this node to tool right here and I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna drag select and pick up these two inner nodes there. So with that node and that node selected, I'm just going to hit the delete key to delete those two nodes. Okay, and now I've got uh, what's going to make up the walls of my um, my vector shape or my uh, my cylinder. Sorry. Uh, so now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and apply a linear fill to it, and I'm going to go to the fill tool, and I'm just going to drag. Uh, uh, across and I can hold down the shift key shift key to uh, um, constrain that I'm going to do that real quick okay with that done I am going to go ahead and play with my fill just a little bit I'm going one I'm going to add a node uh, kind of between the middle point and uh, and the slider point here um, on the left hand side after I've done that I'm going to give this one a more centralized blue color, right? I'm going to leave, then I'm going to select this node, and that one I want to leave fairly uh, close to the white, right? I may go a little bit, yeah, a little bit wider like that. And then I'm going to select this last node, node here, and I'm going to give that also kind of that, oops, that blue that's close to the uh, to the, the center point. Okay, with that done, I'm going to go ahead, select the selector tool, and I'm going to select the, the top uh, shape, okay, the top ellipse. ellipse. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a, also a fill, but I'm going to give it a, um, what in Zara they call a circular fill, but here they call a radial fill. And I'm going to move the center of that fill kind of right equal with uh, with that the line of the, the lighter fill there. I'm going to drop that. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that out towards the end of this. OK? So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and select this again and click there. And that's pretty close to where I want it to be. Um, that's fine, and then I'll go ahead and select this, and I will probably make that either just a hair darker or just a hair lighter 
than what I selected before, right? You don't want it the exact same color because it's not going to show up very well. And I think I'm going to go lighter. So something along those lines there. And then once I'm done with that, I can take my, my shape and just move it down over the top. I'm going to use the, uh, the shift and the down arrow key to, to move that down over the top. Okay, now I, I'm not sure if it's 100% seated right, so I'm going to go back to my view mode, and I'm going to go back to the outline view, and I'll be able to see it, and it looks like it's not quite, so I'm just going to tap the up arrow key a couple of times until it looks just about perfect. Then I'm going to swap back to my uh, view mode, vector view mode, and there we go. Now you can see I have what is basically a cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and move that up a little bit. And uh, if you want to increase the size of this cylinder, that's also easy to do. So you just select the sides of the shape, uh, go back to your node tool, select the bottom three nodes there, right? And then you can hold down the shift key to constrain it and just drag it down where you want. Or you can just hit the down arrow key, either one. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that now by holding down the shift key so that it gets constrained and grabbing onto this center node here and pulling down. And there you go. You've got your cylinder shape created. I'll stop. I'll unselect everything, and then you can see how that turns out. So that's it. That's how you do it. I hope that you found that interesting and useful, and I hope you can really hear it this time. And sorry about the, the extra breathing noises and things like that. Until I get a better mic, this is going to be what I'm going to have to do. All right, great. I uh, hope to see you back next time. Bye.